Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's three day coverage of VMworld 2017. This is day two. I'm John Furrier, your host, with Wikibon analyst Peter Burris and Stu Miniman. Uh, Peter, head of research, wikibon.com, Stu Miniman, analyst. Guys, and co-host Stu on stage two. We got two sets, day one, and we got two more days, Stu. 20 something videos, a lot of content. Keynote is up, Gelsinger's on stage with Michael Dell. Your thoughts? Yeah, so John, first of all, last year, you know, we, we've been doing this show for a lot of years. Last year, the energy was a little off. You know, we, we talked about on in the intro, there's rumors about management change, everything like that. Energy's up. The attendance isn't up much, but there's a lot of good discussion. People are digging into kind of this whole hybrid cloud, multi-cloud world. The keynote this morning, yeah. uh, they've got you know, folks from Google Cloud uh, up on stage. It's supposed to be the biggest announcement in the platform in the last four years. Um, I think we'll dig into that some. I'm not sure that's it's the biggest announcement. Is there an applause? But, um, there was actually a bigger applause when Andy Jassy got on stage yesterday than there was when they announced that you know, VMware and Pivotal are now part of the Cloud Native Container Foundation. So, you know, CNCF, you know, three weeks, a few weeks ago, Amazon joined the CNCF, Microsoft's part of the CNCF. Good step, Kubernetes, absolutely hugely important. VMware and Pivotal don't want to ride that wave, participate in that wave, but I'm not sure that they're, you know, the, the leading edge of it, I like NSX is plugging into it, they're starting to figure out all of those inter networking pieces, but uh, it's not the one that I think, you know, we come a year from now and say like, oh geez, remember when they announced, uh, you know, PKS, you know, that's the thing that really kind of changed the landscape. Yeah, I think the Google announcement was a little bit, seemed desperate to me, although very important. I said it's a little more of a long game on my tweet stream, but I think they try to force that a little bit. Certainly, I personally don't think it was a good move for them to do that at this stage and try to hype it up, given the impact that Jassy had, and also Jassy's jab a little bit at some of these optical deals. We used to call them Barney deals, named after the cartoon Barney. You know, they love each other, but no real deal there. Jassy hinting that most of these cloud deals are optical, not a lot of meat behind it, unlike their deal. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the contrarian in this one, guys. I, I'm not going to say that it's the most important infrastructure deal in the last four years. I think that's very true, Stu, but I would say this. Um, our research, when the AWS uh, VMware deal was announced last October, was that it was an important deal and it was going to have a material impact on the industry because it promised a way for a lot of VM customers to get to the cloud, and now we're seeing that happen. Um, but we also observed that it became pretty clear, it was kind of obvious that AWS had a lot to gain in that, uh, and VMware was, I don't want to say desperate, but VMware was holding on and, and trying to remain relevant as we go through this transition. I think a great thing about this conference is that VMware is demonstrating it's transforming. But think about this Google deal. Who gets the most out of this deal? VMware. VMware, but Google needs us really bad. Google really needs that enterprise presence. And, it, and VMware is in a great position relative to the Google deal. So VMware's now got a couple of companies that it can kind of... You're shaking yeah, your head. Yeah, yeah, so, so, because here's the thing I'd say. While Google Cloud's standing up there, this is not VMware saying, use Google Cloud. This is Pivotal and VMware saying, we're fully integrated with Kubernetes, which means that if I have, you know, Pivotal and VMware using PKS, it is now fully compatible with GKE. But that is very different from what we're seeing with Amazon. I, I talked to a, a, a VMware Amazon joint customer this morning, and he said, you know, I've got my data center, we've been using AWS for four years, and you know, my data center guys are, are kind of slow. And VMware and AWS allows them to be agile, they have the operating model, they have the tools, they like to use this, as opposed to Kubernetes. That changes, you know, you don't talk to a lot of people here at VMware that are like, oh yeah, hey, I'm ready for microservices, I'm going to refactor all my applications. VMware from day one was, I want to take my applications, I want to, without changing a lot of code, move it in there. So, John, we've been talking for years yeah. at this show, you know, where are the developers, are they here? Kubernetes, it's all about the developers. I didn't hear a strong developer push in yeah. the announcement this morning, so that's where uh, I think that still, you know, they're, well, they're very different. It's a good conversation. Yeah. I think Peter's right, Google does need this, but here's the nuance that's kind of in this uh, game. It came from the VMware Cloud Native group. So Cloud Native certainly a strategy for VMware to play. 
VMware doesn't want to have just Amazon. They need to be multi-cloud, so there's right. a multi-cloud game. They need to be multi-cloud. They need to be multi-cloud, but they, I don't think that they should be playing the card. This is a long game. The Kubernetes do, you know and I know, it's really difficult. People want to make it simple. There needs to be cross-compatibility on with application workloads. Very strategic, very important. Not a lot of meat on the bone. Okay, they're shipping a commercial version of Kubu. Big deal. Most container implementations are running in a virtual machine. They just are. Yeah, true. This is, this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is an important deal for users. And that's the most important Potential thing. users that are going to be in the evolution of where this is going. To Sue's point, I think that where it connects is, the conversation here is, I'm just trying to get my act together on the on-prem, true private cloud. Look, we're, seeing, we're, seeing, we're seeing the industry start to reform. And so again, Stu, you're right. It's not the most important thing in four years. But it's also not something to be- It's a strategic intent. Sense. It's very important. Well, Sam? But it's also got, got near-term implications, is that for anybody that's doing container-based development, is doing it, is running that whole thing right. inside of VM, and along comes VMware that says, hey, you know what? Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring industrial strength to this. It's a good yeah. thing. Let's yeah. treat it as a good it's thing. It's a good thing. Again, we all have a good conversation. This is a frothy conversation. I love it, which means it's relevant to you guys out there. I think timing's interesting. Again, I wouldn't have done the strategic play on this one. I would have done it more of a strategic intent, the shipping stuff. Okay, cool. But you guys are on it. We'll be monitoring it. Peter, I got to ask you the question as a kickoff day two. You guys have been beavering away for two days now here in analyst sessions, meeting all the executives. What's your observation? What's your takeaway so far? Well, the, uh, the thing that we talked about, we, we did the wrap up yesterday and out of the analyst day came a couple of things. And the first thing I'll say is that um, when, you, when you now kind of peel back the covers of any new VMware initiative, increasingly you find NSX staring back at you and it didn't used to be that way. So increasingly you're finding that NSX is becoming that kind of crown jewel, and that plays into this notion of VMware wanting to be the multi-cloud orchestrator using NSX as kind of a cross multi-cloud technology. The second thing is that uh, it's, it's always interesting to observe how uh, software technology, we, we talk about software technology in abstraction or independent of hardware but the two always do move together. And we talked about yesterday how vSAN has become such an important technology in the industry, Stu, and the observation we made was that, and isn't it interesting that it, vSAN's importance grew just as people started doing flash-based yeah. uh, storage arrays. And so those, those two things are becoming much more important in the, in the aggregate universe yeah. here. And the third thing is, VMware is trying to do more around simplification through the Cloud Foundation, but it, it looks, it's, they have to make sure that it doesn't just look like a new architecture, a new set All of right. marketing. So here's, the, here's, I'm going to throw some uh, controversy out there. Stu, I heard some hallway conversations all last night, and the theme pretty much was this, I'm kind of paraphrasing multiple conversations. Love the direction, love, love vSAN, love all this NSX stuff, I do agree, NSX is looking like the crown jewel, cloud native over the top, orchestration is going to be the battleground for middleware. Great, I love that, but now I'm an operations guy. I got VMware and I got to go to the cloud in the big way, got to manage all this stuff. I have operational stacks merging together that have not been tested in multiple configurations with VMs, hardware stacks, software stacks, jamming together untested. This is a new pain point and a slow point we're slowing people down. Stu, do you agree? Yeah, uh, really interesting point because let, let's look at vSAN and NSX. vSAN, I can hand that to a virtualization admin and they can get running pretty fast on that. Uh, actually, had, you know, one of the executives from VMware, he's like, we save money for customers really fast. NSX, a little bit of a longer game, a little bit more complicated, especially when you start getting into it. This whole interfabric between clouds, this is not a you know, easy button for multi-cloud or anything like that. But NSX is really cool. John, we've been watching since day one. I mean, we, I remember back, you and I interviewed Martin Casado right after the acquisition. You know, huge acquisition, and as Pat Gelsinger said in the keynote yesterday, what vSphere was for the last 20 years, NSX will be for the next decade or more. So, absolutely, we kind of understand where the battlegrounds are. Um, the devil's Operations always in the details. Is it stable, Stu? Is this stuff stable? No, <laughs> none of it's stable. <laughs> but Love it. But we're in the midst of a significant transformation, so we shouldn't expect stability. It, it, you know, stability, you You're know. You're implying I, the outcome for the simple. customers is significantly there to make the investment. That's right, you, this is not plug and play world. Yeah, yeah. This is, there's a lot of work that's going on, and what, 
What users are looking for now is who are the technology companies that are going to be able to make and sustain the investments to drive simplification. And Bingo. VMware is in the mix. One of the other things we said last night, John, is that if you look back, there have been, a f there have been very few technology companies who have successfully made a major transformation. IBM did it in the early 1990s. Microsoft's done it a couple times. We may be witnessing VMware making a pretty significant transformation this here. This show is not a dud, that's for sure, no doubt. VMworld and reInvent will probably become the most, two most important shows in cloud, hands down. Obviously besides some of the international stuff we're seeing that's with Alibaba. Important. You know, Microsoft, I'm seeing not a lot of clarity around Microsoft. It's Google, they're trying to get that cloud event going. Again, it's a great cloud wars are going on, guys. So, this is going to be crazy. Michael but it's Dell. starting to take shape, it's starting well, to take shape. You mentioned simplicity, Michael Dell's coming on. One of the things I'm going to ask him, and I'd like to get your thoughts on what, what we should ask him. I'm going to ask him, how do you make this shit simple? Right, that ultimately is, in the era of all this stuff kind of jamming together, stacks, hardware stacks, software stacks, operational, uh, seamless operational capability, new developers coming on board, edge of the network. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things, a, a, a critique I have for Dell the company is they want to give you choice. You know, you're going to talk to Michael and he's going to say, Azure Stack, I've got that solution. AWS, VMware's got that solution. We've got the VMware solutions. We've got VirtuStream over here and everything. Customers want opinionated offerings to help them through that because, oh my gosh, I figured out the virtualization stuff and I'm figuring out some of the networking and security piece. Now I got containers and there's other stuff coming from the future and oh my God, security is beating me over the head nonstop and now you want to be a major player in there. So yeah, how can they help customers get into the right swim lanes, uh, you know, get comfort, well, Stu, that's comfortable the, in the, the deep end. But Peter just talked about what I think is really kind of key is, he mentioned plug and play, I'll just kind of go a step further. This general purpose computing market is over. Nothing's general purpose anymore. There's general things that you need to bolt on, but you have unique requirements <laughs> by corporations and enterprises so, that need so to. Let, let's, so so I'll, I'll push on that a second, and I'll give you what, the question I would ask, because uh, if we look at the big picture, the big picture goes like this. The first 50 years of the computing industry were dominated by an OLTP oriented model of how you do computing. Uh, highly, you know, highly uh, imperative programming, uh, the tool sets were set up that way. Single database manager, you serialize everything through the database, ma database manager. That is the model that drove the first 50 years. We're in the middle of something totally different right now. We really don't know what it is. We can see the piece parts, what they're coming together. Yeah. It's going to be more functional programming, more declarative, distributed data. We're not going to serialize the same way. We can see what it's going to look like, but it's unclear exactly what shape it's going to take. The question I would ask, and I think it's, it's kind of uh, builds on what you said is, um, what is Dell's, what is Dell's commitment to the cloud experience of 2022? Yeah. We know what the cloud experience is today. The cloud experience today is defined by Amazon. They've done an absolutely magnificent job. Nobody thought they could do it except for Amazon. And they did it. And they've done an absolutely magnificent job of it. Yep. But what's the cloud experience of 2022? We say it's going to be true private cloud, hybrid cloud, and a set of methods and a computing model that starts with data and finishes with outcome. What does Michael Dell say it's going to be? Great question. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, Peter, that, that is the question uh, you talk about. You know, when we look at the whole mega merger of Dell, EMC, and VMware, at the end of the day, Michael wants to pull through more servers. Yeah. But it's that operating model that's going to drive things. So will VMware really be able to fix their management stack? You know, P Peter, when I became an analyst seven years ago, I was like, well, anytime I can always say back, well, security and management are broken and they still <laughs> suck, right? <laughs> and so the question is, five years from now, will we you know, be able to say, hey, you know, VMware's really doing some awesome things. Pivotal's really bringing this together. Dell Technologies is front and center to help that yeah. experience. Well, I was going to ask him who he's voting for, who's voting for Mayweather or McGregor, <laughs> fighting, he went to fight night. Mike Tyson, right? Yeah, yeah Mike, uh... <laughs> I with the Mike Tyson. All right, serious question to end this. Peter, I know this is something that's uh, near and dear to your heart, and Stu at Wikibon, you guys are really doing a lot of end user conversations. How should end users start preparing themselves? Because Pat Gelsinger kind of laying out the narrative of today is the last day, that <laughs> the shortest time things are going to change, whatever his quote was, it's going to get faster. And to your point about all this work that needs to get done and the investment, the customer environment is going to get crazier, hairier, and more complex. What are end user enterprise customers having to do? So if I'm a CIO, I'm doing three things. 
The first thing I'm doing is I am introducing the core principles of, that are related to Agile. So I'm telling my people, culturally, we're going to be empirical, we're going to use data to make decisions, we're going to be iterative, we're going to you know, cycle, and we're going to be really opportunistic. We are going to be very willing to break down sacred cows. That's the first thing I'm doing. The second thing I'm doing is I'm starting to introduce a set of edicts that say, if we can put it in the public cloud, we will put it in the public cloud. But we have to use iterative, empirical, and opportunistic to recognize that we won't always be able to put it in the club of cloud. And we have to be prepared to be able to do stuff on premise because we are going to be doing things on premise. The third thing that I'm going to do, and I think this is really important, is that IT, for the last n number of years, has been focused on taking cost out of the business. And you know, David Floyer talks about this a lot, the idea of automation. Well, increasingly IT is going to be asked to find ways to add revenue to the business. That's kind of where the, a lot of this digital engagement goes. What that boils down to ultimately is that the, history, the history of working, collaborating, has been based on taking cost out, driven by procurement, and this notion of strategic relationships has been kind of a fraud. It's been kind of something that we just say. So the third thing is, you're going to have to start focusing on what it really means to do strategic vendor management, to truly partner, to transfer yeah. and control intellectual property boundaries, yeah. and how that happens. So those are the yeah. three things I think CIOs absolutely must start and doing. And that is what Andy Jassy was hinting around, these optical illusions, whether it's vendor, where's the partnerships, where's the coding. Great observation, Peter, I got to say that was phenomenal. We agree, I mean, this is ultimately a new era of computing with AI, IOT Edge, I think Pat Gelsinger laid out the wave slide beautifully we're yesterday. We're throwing the computing industry up in the air right now and seeing what's going to land. It's time to start shaping that into the new model of how we're going to think through problems and how we're going to solve problems with yeah. technology. And we had the CIO perspective yesterday with Basque Ayeron, who's the CIO of VMware. He said, John, look at these, some things in, in IT are recognizable, there are certain patterns. We know when retail has spikes, so yeah, I'll do bursting in the cloud, but most things can be patternized, and that's okay, and that's going to have to be, some things will always be unrecognizable, but it's not always that dynamic. But once you get that nailed down, that's where the true private cloud report comes in. Congratulations, by the way, on the true private cloud report from Wikibon. It's going viral here hey, at the show. Hey, built on some great work from uh, Stu and David Floyer over many years. Great work, it's going viral. Talk of the town here in Vegas. Congratulations, Stu. Oh, th thank you, and it's something that we've been having this conversation in this community specifically at VMworld for years because where do I get, it was that air gap between I virtualized and that helped utilization to I really need to get to that operating model of the cloud. Uh, I interviewed a, a consultant from Australia last year uh, on the other set, and he said a lot of the companies he's talked to, still talk to is IT is still a cost center. And we've been talking for years about moving from just being a cost center to really partnering with the, with the business, or you know, Jeremy Burton I interviewed recently, and he's like, no, IT's driving the business. And it's great that there are some companies yeah. that are fully transformed and they're engaging in that, or at least they tell a good story of it. Uh, but there's a lot of customers that are yeah. still working on their own journey and that, that, that's what shows like this are all about. So, well, so really quick, John, the way I describe that is if we think about cost benefit or we think about productivity, it's how much work am I going to get done for how much cost. The cost is the denominator. What we like to say is that IT has to start taking on a numerator mentality. Yeah. What benefits am I going to create? What opportunities am I going to create? What revenue am I going to help create? got to think on the numerator side of the equation. You guys do some great work. You know, a lot of analysts always pumping up reports. Oh, you got to see this, and then pushing it out to analyst relations. If you're in this business, whether you're a CXO, an enterprise, or work for a company, and you don't read that true private cloud report, you possibly could be fired. It's really game, game, game changing. It's like the software eating the word world memo. This is the, the, the marketplace that's hot right now. True private cloud report by Wikibon, check it out. This is theCUBE, day two coverage continues. We'll be right back with more after this short break.